everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Chris Yee. I'm Roy Kenny. I'm Mike Delicio. And today we're taking a look at the game called The Great Split. No, I did it right. So proud of you, Tom. Mm -hmm. I've been calling it the Great Divide for a few I weeks. I made an Instagram post about this and called it the Great Divide because you kept calling it the Great Divide. Ah, I don't, I don't know why name. I do that. Especially since in this game you are splitting. You're doing the divide and you choose mechanism. <sighs> yeah, I think, I, it's, I don't know what it is. Anyway, this game is based on a mechanism that's not used enough in games. Straight up. Agreed. The I split, you choose. There's a few games that do it, but very few. It, I don't get it. It's a really good mechanism. Mm -hmm. I've always loved its implementation. So it runs the risk of being very mathematical, I suppose, um, and not exciting. So I guess it depends on how it's utilized. To me, I always treat these games more as a gut thing, but we can get to that. It's also mm. stress, I guess, involved yeah, in the yeah. splitting. Maybe some people don't like that. Yeah. Also, this game is drafting and definitely modeled a little bit on Seven Wonders mm. because this also goes up to seven players. Anyway. Yeah. Here's how it plays. Each player is going to have their own board like this. You'll have a starting character, and a starting character does a couple things. They're going, you're going to move up on different tracks based on what the starting character shows. So I'd move up one on all four of those. And then the icons at the bottom will affect end game scoring. So you notice there's a lot of tracks here. There are um, f five here at the top and then five at the bottom. Each of these tracks refers to various things that you're trying to get. Um, and so players are going to be trying to grab tomes, artwork, topaz, emerald, gold, and then these are considered seals down here. Now you're going to get points at various times during the game. The game itself is going to take place over uh, six rounds. In each round, the first thing that's going to happen is players are going to draw a card into their hand from a certain deck, deck two or three. Players will already have four cards from deck one. These are your starting cards. That's all you'll ever use from deck one. You'll add one. You then discard down to whatever number it shows here. In this case, it's five. And then the great draft begins. Each player has one of these with a split card in it. You're going to look at the cards you have. So I might say, eh, I will, you can put them around, move them around any order you want. So maybe I'll do this and move this over here. Putting this split, I'm going to put these into my holder and pass it clockwise to the next person. After everyone's done that, you'll open it up and that person has to decide do they want these three cards or do they want these two? They're going to pick and you can put the split anywhere you want. Let's say they decide to take these two. They'll put the rest of the cards back in and return it to me. I'm going to take the cards that I got from my split, add them to the cards that were returned to me and I'll play all them. Each of these cards moves you up a track. This one gives me a point. Yay, I'm winning the game. This one gives me a gold. This one gives me topaz and emerald. And then your split card lets you move up one track of your choice. Why are we moving up these tracks? Well, twice during the game, there's gonna be scoring for tomes and you score however far you've gotten up on the tome track. Twice during the game, you'll score for the emeralds and topaz. You'll take the lower of those two tracks, whatever number it's on, in this case it's on four, double that and that's how many points you get. Gold doesn't score at all during the game, but there are certain spots on here that let you take any other track and move that track up twice. The seals down here also don't score during the game, but as they land on different icons, they'll move the associated track forward one. Now art is going to score and scoring, it's going to score based on where this marker is here. By the way, between rounds three and four, there's one or two scorings. One, this is randomly set. Between rounds four and five, there's two, one or two scorings. And then after round seven, there's four different scorings happening. Art is scored because after every round, you'll flip over these random numbers, and this is how far the art track will move. And whenever art is scored, you'll look and see how many you have, and you're gonna get zero, six, 10, 13, or 15 points based on where this tracker is. The main other thing then is during final scoring. In final scoring, you're going to score your seals. You'll take a look at each of these five seals. So for example, let's say I take a look at art. Let's say I got to this spot here. This shows three stars. 
and I'm up to this spot on the art track. I've passed two of these art pieces here. I have one on my card, that's three, and then the number of stars here is three. Three times three is nine. So you can see if you get both tracks all the way over, you could score a lot of points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times four, 32 points. But you're not gonna be able to get all your tracks over, so you need to decide. And you'll be multiplying times the gold, times the emerald and topaz, times the art, and times the tomes. That happens at the very end of the game. And that's how you play. The theme of this game is... Uh, is there right. a theme, really? <laughs> well, yeah, you're collecting Grace art, sketch, remember? I thought the theme was theme. tracks. I tracks is you, the theme. Yeah, <laughs> I went into my first play of this with no idea what the theme was. And you left still not knowing the theme? And it didn't matter. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I don't think this is a game that needs theme to carry mm. it along, in Cause, my opinion. Because you have top tracks and then you have... Multiplier tracks. I don't know. It feels just like reading The Great Gatsby, I think. Sure. sure, sure. <laughs> Fair enough. Scott Fitzgerald would be proud. <laughs> the art is fantastic, though. This is definitely a style that this company is leaning into mm -hmm. uh, with this particular artist and this. It's, it's an aesthetic. Aesthetic? Yeah. It's, we saw uh, it in their last one with the, the sun. E of evergreen. Evergreen. Mm. To the point where, I mean, yeah. if you put Evergreen and Great Split on the table, they both came out this year, I would know they were the same publisher. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, no, it, it, the, the look is very, very, I think, elegant and classy are the words that kind of come to mind, almost like an art deco type of a feel. Mm -hmm. the, um, the the components, the dual layer boards are right. nice. The little, the little, you know, wallets, I think, work fine for, for what you're doing. The card quality seems good, so. Even though we were going so fast, half the time, like, I don't want to close this wallet anymore. I will yeah. say I don't love the wallets. Yeah. I mm -hmm. think the wallets are fine. I think it's weird that they're like, hey, spread the cards out, put this in between, and you really can't in that wallet. You're just basically almost, putting a little deck of cards. I almost feel like yeah. I would almost just forgo the wallets, put the thing in the middle, and then just put the card face down, and then just pass it back and forth. When I withdraw, you might as well forgo it, because you just threw them in there and threw them to me anyway. It didn't much matter, yeah, I was right? hoping was like to like, make them... But actually, I disagree on that. I think you 100% need those wallets, because as the game plays, They're gonna mix you will occasionally be like, are. wait. Yeah. Whose is that? Right, more for the it color. It has my color yeah. in it. It's mine. That's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's There's funny. That. I really like the wallets. I think huh. that even component-wise, mm -hmm. aesthetic-wise, all that it feels nice to kind of tuck something mm -hmm. because you don't you won't have the oh my cards fell out all right. just all that stuff. It's like a smart little uh, physical tangible thing that says hey I am done. I have passed it. You know how many drafting games have you played where someone says like oh. Oh, the, the cards are coming my way. Sorry, I didn't realize, right? It's 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 blatant. I'm done. I'm ready to receive your wallet now. Let's go. There the, you go. So the game we mentioned at the beginning is based on the I split, you choose type mm -hmm. thing. And you're passing them to the left each time. And we talked about why don't you pass other ways and came to the conclusion cards need to go around the they table. Need to cycle. Yeah. Otherwise, because you can't get the same cards back. Each, each time you play, the cards that you that you chose between come back to you and you're splitting them again, which may not have been clear in the overview, but that's how it works. <laughs> um, the, I, I like this mechanism. It, I, it might be in my top 10 mechanisms. I really like it's, it. It's well. a very interesting. I mean, there was, I mean, back in the day, there were magic cards where you play it and you draw cards and then your opponent would choose the two to split. It's just a very interesting thing of like, you want to kind of almost make both good for you in some ways, because that way you won't be too disappointed if either one doesn't happen. It was funny because, like, at the beginning of the game, I was looking over at everybody else's board, and Mike was like, "Oh, why is he even looking at people's boards?" I'm like, "Well, it matters a I lot because if, yes, if yes. I know <laughs> if I know what Mike, Mike wants, mm -hmm. then I can like switch up and like give him kind of a little bit of what he wants to tempt him, but then also take more of what I need." Right. It's not and, even it's, it's not like a hate draft because I was joking about right, that, yeah, but yeah. you're right. That's what you want to see what. The person you're passing it to, what do they want? Because there are certain cards I want, so I'm going to load it in such a way that he takes the, the split that doesn't include what I want. Right. It means Absolutely. I may have to give him or her more cards, physical cards, so that I can get the ones that I really want. So yeah, you absolutely have to look at what people and have. It's kind of yeah. a funny game of like tempting, tempting the other player to be like, I know you you really want that one, but you're really gonna be helping me right. out a ton when yeah. I get the other half of that. And it's so you funny know? when you get it, you can tell. Like I said this multiple times in the game that we played, I was like, I know which cards Rory wants me to take, 
and I'm going to end up taking these stupid cards, <laughs> yes. even though I know this is what he wants me yes. to take, because he's going to be left with something he wants, but it's I, you have to make that evaluation. Is it better for me, the net gain for mm -hmm. me better than the net gain for my opponent? It's hard to tell. Um, and I'm there's an interesting thing, method, too, but. because the, the card pool is so limited, but the fact that like you have a hand of cards that are more than what you're supposed to have, and you get to discard cards out of the card pool, mm -hmm. which is kind of interesting, too, because you're kind of taking those cards out of circulation yeah. that would normally be going around the table a little bit. You can be like, oh, I'm not going for books this time. Let me just get rid of books. I feel like a lot of us were doing that, and then Mike, who was like loving books, was like, where are all the books at? <laughs> you know, it was kind of funny. There's definitely, if someone keeps more cards than the hand limit, they discard them out. Uh, and inversely, that means that the other people around him don't have the full hand of cards. Mm -hmm. So that's a that's yeah. a decision that plays into how you how you uh, are going to take when someone splits it your way. The thing that I think is really cool is that you are doing two versions of I split you choose at the same time. You are valuating these cards, dividing them, passing them on, and then you're also receiving one at the same time. Right. So mm -hmm. that there's not the downtime of waiting like some other games have. It's just, it's so simultaneous. So I'm getting Roy's packet, and now I'm deciding at the same time which ones do I want to keep. So it's, it's you're seeing both sides of it simultaneously. I think that's mm -hmm. what kind of makes this one um, more constantly fun and engaging mm -hmm. than other I Split You Choose games that I've seen. Mm -hmm. Now I mentioned at the beginning, I mentioned Seven Wonders, mm -hmm. and it's going to feel like that a little bit. There's, they're very different games, I get that. It's really different. But that you can pay, you are still drafting. Drafting right. is the other part of this game. It's drafting and I split you choose. Kind of mixed together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> but I will say, just like Seven Wonders, and I played this with a lot of people, you really are only playing with three people. Mm -hmm. You and your two neighbors. Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. you are playing against everybody else, but in Seven Wonders, occasionally you might, I'll draft this card, pass it around, maybe it'll come back to me. You don't even think about that really in this game. Like, if I give this card and you take it, then you'll pass it to that. That's not even a thing. It is more immediate. This is what I take right now. Yeah. I, when I pass cards, I never ever will think, well, Mike will take this half. Then he'll pass it on. That might happen. It might right. come all the way back around me. But it's not an issue. Again, I'm thinking about what I'm giving you right. and what I'm receiving from you. And that's it. And that yeah. means this plays seven fine yeah. Yeah. because yeah. of that. Yeah, the only thing I can think of that you might be concerned about what other people other than your immediate neighbors are doing is like, are we pushing up this art track? You know, because yeah. it affects everybody. But other than that, yeah, I agree no, with you. No, but you're not pushing up the art track. The art track itself. is pushed by the game. That's true, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's true. I guess what are people investing in that might... Yeah, but I, I think that I wouldn't care too much, even yeah. two people away, in this table arrangement. Right. I'm not... Yeah, I... I might pass cards on to Tom and see if he splits them or whatever, but I, at that beyond that point, I have no agency yeah, whatsoever. I have no true. control. So yeah. I, I do think this is interesting in some ways. I mean, most drafting games go back and forth the different directions to make it so you're interacting with both sides. This one, it's the way that it works is the fact that you're choosing from both people. You're choosing how to split here, and then here you're choosing which ones to keep, and you're great. technically like directly affecting both of those players a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, with the cards that you're passing and the cards that you're deciding to keep. I mean, Mike was to my uh, left, so he was always making those choices of which side he wanted. Mm -hmm. And then with, with uh, Chris, I was always picking like the things. So in different games, you're going to have different people, and it's going to mix it up each time, and you can kind of tell with their boards kind of like how you want to affect not only your board, but theirs a little bit in some ways. I, th right. I, I think one of the weaknesses, I don't even know if it's a weakness or a downside of this game, but it's just going to be an inevitability, is that if I'm a somewhat experienced player, or at least if I'm decent at valuating things, mm -hmm. and I'm sitting in between two people that are not, I'm going to be at a massive advantage. Yeah, you brought up what I was going to say, which is something at our at the game that all four of us played together. I was kind of asking, I was just asking the question as a philosophical, <laughs> you know, how much do we think it would affect it if there's somebody that is just not very good or not comfortable or confident in evaluating you know, making valuation judgments on these cards. How much would it affect it? And we kind of went back and forth, and, you know, I don't I'm know not, that it would completely destroy the game or anything, that, but I think it would affect it. That always happens in drafting know. games a lot. Sometimes in in Seven Wonders, you have to be like, don't let someone get all the science. We're just going <laughs> to yeah. say that up front. Oh, right. I always say that yeah. in every game I teach. Yeah. For me, I like the game. This was mm -hmm. one of my most anticipated games. Um, but I'm only giving it a Only. Mm -hmm. But I'm giving it a seven. Okay. I like it a lot. I love moving up tracks, I love splitting, I love drafting. Three things I love. So why is it not higher? That's because I feel like this game is fully explorable mm. after only so many mm. plays. There's not a lot of, 
I mean, maybe you guys will argue on this, but I don't know that there's a lot of huge depth here. Mm -hmm. This almost right. feels like a filler to me. Mm -hmm. And it's not a filler because it's like 30 to 45 minutes. It's not 30. Probably 45, 45 minutes, right? Yeah. 45 yeah. minutes. And I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And I have a good time. But I'm also, when I'm done with it, I don't go, I want to... Oh, man, and I don't think about it all night because right. it's in the moment. I'm mm -hmm. playing it. I'm moving up those tracks. You can't move up all the tracks. Mm -hmm. But also, there only is really five tracks at the top, five tracks at the bottom. After a while, you're like, all right, I did gold this time. Next time, I'll do books. Right. You know, whatever. There's not a lot of... Ah, so this that sounds negative. I don't mean it sound negative. I'm just saying why I don't love it. Mm -hmm. I think it is fine. I think it's fun, and it's interesting, and a lot of people will enjoy it. I'm concerned that even though the aesthetic is cool to us. Mm -hmm. I don't know how widespread aesthetic this is going to be. Like, if so, this was sold at Target, yeah. I don't think people would necessarily pull it off the shelf. Although, I think that this could be a game sold in Target. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So, yeah. I don't know. So, seven for me. So, I'm close. I'm at a 7.5. Um, and it's almost solely on the eye split you choose. You know, a lot of times, there'll be a, a mechanism that I like and, I'm, and I'll be like, I wish they had just focused on that mechanism and not surrounded it with all the True. fluff, right? This is that. Mm -hmm. The reason why it's not higher is because I honestly am not that thrilled about the tracks. Right. That's not terribly oh, exciting to me. Tracks are amazing. Yeah, tracks can be amazing, but in here, it's literally just multipliers. Like, right. they're, they're not even really obscuring the math at all. This is multiplication tables on, on a board. And that's mm -hmm. fine, but it's not terribly exciting to me. The I split you choose is great, and it's enough to carry it to a 7.5. The look and the aesthetic also help. Uh, but I agree with you. I don't think there's a tremendous amount of replay value. I don't think this is a game you're going to come back to over and over and over again. Um, but if someone offers to play it, I'm going to be always down to play it because it's so fast. It's so easy. Mm -hmm. I look forward to teaching this to people. I like what a wide range of player count. That's true. So, it does go to 7, which yeah. is rare. Right, so 7.5, easy to recommend. I don't know if it has a lot of depth, like you said, and I don't love the tracks, but the eye split you choose is great. For me, I'm going to say 7.5 also. I really enjoy games. Like, this is my style of, like, if I'm going to play a game that's just about points and, like, gaining resources and going up tracks, this is this kind of game I want because of the speed of it. I mm. love games that are, like, like, simultaneous actions and doing things, like, at the same time, and draft games are normally like that, but this is basically just purely that I split you choose draft mechanism, and I really enjoyed that a lot. And I just enjoy like that, some of the little combos that come in there. It's like, oh, I got this and that, and the interaction is pretty high in this mm -hmm. as you're paying attention to what's on both sides of you and figuring out how to split that stuff up. I, I thought it was a bunch of fun, um, but 7.5 for me as well. I'm giving this an eight, and it's funny because I'm going to kind of talk effusively about it for a minute. It's going to sound like I like it. Way more than you guys, even though the scores are very close. <laughs> yeah. right? Well, I think it's all in relative. I was saying why yeah. it wasn't higher, but I actually do like the game a sure. lot. Yeah. Right. And so to clarify, we all enjoy it. We I think all recommend would, it, yes. Yeah. Um, I, I love tracks. I love mm. tracks a lot in games. And mm. so kind of to your point, Mike, the fact that the tracks are fairly simple means that you are focused more on the card player, the mm -hmm. splitting and the choosing. And I like that a lot. But the tracks do have a bit more depth to them because you're trying to pass those icons mm -hmm. on tracks and then multiply them. But what you didn't mention was that each track also scores differently by itself. Right, throughout the game and then, yeah. And then at the end of the game. Mm -hmm. And so I like that you might try and push the green and the blue very equal to each other. But mm -hmm. at some point you might say, that's a lost cause. I'm just going to shove green all the way over and upgrade its multiplier. Mm -hmm. So you do have two layers of scoring that you're trying to focus on per track, I think. Mm -hmm. um, you can't do all of it, and so, yeah, is, is this a game that I'm going to keep pulling out? Not all the time, but I think it's a good one to have in the arsenal, mm -hmm. have in the library. Um, and if for nothing else, I think people will be hooked by the look, the aesthetic, the simplicity of a turn, and the excitement of flipping over that art track, moving mm -hmm. it up. Oh, hey, ooh, green scoring is about to come up soon. Oh, I'm excited about yeah. that. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot that this game offers. I'm giving it an 8. I really like it. Well, there you go. That's the great split. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Chris Yee. I'm Roy Kenning. I'm Mike Delicio. Me and Mike, or Chris and Roy, you choose. Ooh.